So, I've said on my channel before that it's a common occurrence that people use the word black and tans or tans as kind of a blanket term for all British constables that were in Ireland during the War of Independence. A lot of the time people tend to forget about the auxiliary division of the Royal Irish Constabulary or else they just lump them in under the black and tan name even though they were two very different groups. How's it going lads? Welcome back to another video. If you want early access to all of these videos, I actually have them available on my Patreon. If you want to sign up to that, I'll have it linked below in the description. Also, to keep up to date for future videos, make sure you give me a follow on Instagram also, where I'll have linked below. So even though this video is going to be about the auxiliary division of the Royal Irish Constabulary, let's just talk about the Black and Tans first, because they arrived about five months before the Augsies did. So as the War of Independence began, the police force in Ireland were called the Royal Irish Constabulary, or the RIC. The RIC were under tremendous pressure to gain control over the IRA as they were using guerrilla tactics such as ambushes. So in January of 1920, the RIC began recruiting men from Great Britain. These men began to arrive in March 1920, and as they arrived, seamstresses in Ireland were on strike, and there was a lack of RIC uniforms. So the new recruits wore a mix of the RIC cap and tunic, and the British military khaki trousers. The odd combination of colours in their uniform earned them the nickname the Black and Tans. Now, I think we all know that the Black and Tans had a huge impact on Ireland when they arrived. They rampaged the country and made the IRA's life a terribly lot harder. However, with the IRA's use of guerrilla tactics such as ambushes, the Black and Tans were still struggling to gain control over the Irish Republican Army. So in July of 1920, they began recruiting again and this welcomes the Auxiliary Division of the Royal Irish Constabulary. In August of 1920, the first Augsies began to arrive in Ireland, distinguished from the Black and Tans by their Tam O'Shanter cap. On paper, these men were very different than the Black and Tans. All of the Augsies were recruited from the officer classes of the British Army. Most of them were Royal Air Force, or RAF. The average age of an Augsie was 35 years old, in comparison to the average age of a Black and Tan of only 26. So these men were a lot more experienced, a lot more accomplished, and they were known as an elite force of British constables. And as you would presume, they militarised the RIC a lot more than the Tans even did. Irish civilians were terrified of the Augsies as they rampaged and terrorised the country. They were known for their inhumane violence and their drunkenness. As they would drive through the country roads of Ireland on their Crosley tenders, they would often shoot at farmers out in the fields for fun. However, this fear of the Augsies began to change slightly in the end of 1920, when a young 23-year-old Irish rebel, veteran of World War I, led his 3rd West Cork Brigade into Kilmichael in County Cork to ambush the Augsies. On the 28th of November 1920, Tom Barry led his 3rd West Cork Brigade down to Kilmichael. They ambushed and killed 17 men in this elite force. This was one of the most successful ambushes by the IRA in the Irish War of Independence, and it showed that Irish people were not going to go down without a fight. Tom Barry mentions in his book, Guerrilla Days in Ireland, that the Augsies were the worst, most dangerous and unforgiving group that ever came in to Ireland and they needed to be stopped. This is why I think it's really important to not mix up the Augsies with the Black and Tans and just lump the Augsies in with the Black and Tans. The Augsies performed some of the worst atrocities in Irish history. If you looked at Bloody Sunday, Croke Park, November 1920 or the Clonmold Ambush in Cork, 1921, these were performed by the Auxiliary Division of the Royal Irish Constabulary, not necessarily the Black and Tans. That is not to say that the Black and Tans weren't that bad whatsoever. It's just important not to forget about the Auxiliaries as they performed some of the worst events in Irish history. As Tom Barry said himself, he said that these were the worst group of British forces to ever come into the country of Ireland. Thanks a million for watching this video. I hope it was beneficial for you in understanding the difference between the Augsies and the Black and Tans. Again, if you want early access to all my videos, you can sign up to the Patreon, which I'll have linked below. Otherwise, give me a follow on Instagram so you can keep up to date for future videos. I also have an ebook available, which is on the top 10 Irish rebel songs, where I break down the history of some of Ireland's greatest folk or rebel songs. That will also be linked down in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video, lads. Talk to you later. Thanks a million.